why are people not all up in arms about the fact that you need a bench? Because if you rewind, not too long ago, there was a point in time where Dave Castro posted to his Instagram and he said, hey, you guys need dumbbells. Yo, the time is here. We have a bench press in the quarterfinals. That's a very cool thing. It's something that I've been waiting for forever. Like, when's CrossFit going to have released the bench press? If Dave Castro having to leave CrossFit is what brought us the bench press, that's freaking sweet. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about how you even find out if there's a bench there. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to be an Instagram follower probably, right? You're going to be an Instagram person. You're going to see that somebody reposted something somewhere and they're like, oh my God, there's a bench. This is the coolest thing ever. Or it's going to be one red max. Is it going to be Linda? Is it going to be the other total? Who knows what it's going to be? But the bench press is there but what if you don't have an instagram so i went to the crossfit.com page and i went i mean it's games.crossfit.com and then you click on quarterfinals so let's say you're in the top 10 percent of the individuals or you're in the top 25 percent of the teams and then you want to you know find out what you're going to need or when the quarterfinals start and as of right now i click on the page and then you go onto the quarterfinal roster and you can do things like click on up comes a video of someone doing a bar muscle up okay you click on learn more Click on Learn More and it brings you to the 2021 Age Group Qualifier Workouts. So this is an issue because if you're on Instagram or you've heard people talking about it, you don't have Instagram, what are you going to do? You're going to go to the source where you should be able to find all of this stuff. You go, okay, quarterfinals, I'm going to click on the tab and I'm going to click on Learn More and then it brings you to this Age Group Qualifier thing. All right, maybe I don't click that button. I clicked the wrong button. Maybe they haven't updated it yet. I'm going to go click on Events. When you click on Events, it's going to bring you to the 2021 Events. You see some people doing handstand push-ups and double dumbbell hang cleans because that was last year's workouts and then you go okay now what do i do i go back i'll click on stories let's click on stories when i click on stories it's the 2022 crossfit games a whole bunch of random videos by some people i don't know adrian bosman's there i like him so i'm not going to say anything bad about adrian bosman all he does is good stuff but you don't have anything in the quarterfinals tab about what you need to do for quarterfinals levels levels five teams disqualified open workouts released whole bunch of athletes. I'm not seeing anything anywhere that's telling me what I need to know about the quarterfinals. So you better pray to God that you're on Instagram, right? Because if you're not on Instagram, you don't know what's happening. And that is a huge problem on CrossFit end. So one of the big things that I keep talking about is that CrossFit's doing all this stuff and they're doing all this stuff that just isn't important, but they're not doing the things that are supposed to be important. They're supposed to be promoting the quarterfinals, right? The open's over. Oh, nice job, everybody. You made it to the next stage. You made it through to the quarterfinals. Congratulations, your season continues. We're gonna make a quick post on Instagram because that's the easy thing. Like I can do that on my phone. Like anyone in the world can do that. We're not a billion dollar organization. Now to a freaking worldwide competition with 300,000 people signed up for it. The biggest competition that's organized through sport in the world ever, the CrossFit Open. They can't even put together a website. It's something that local competitions all around the world do. The Big Impact Games or the Game Day competitions and there's freaking well and much more put together websites than CrossFit can even do at this point. And I think it's ridiculous. So now before I even talk about the equipment list, I want to talk about what we got in that email. So we did get an email. So let's say you all are qualifying for quarterfinals and you are somebody who checks your email which i'm not but i have checked my email so let's say there is a world in which you don't need to use the crossfit website you are an email user you check your email and you say okay this is everything that i need to know for quarterfinals at this point congratulations based on unofficial scores you are amongst the athletes who have qualified for the 2022 noble quarterfinals they're the next step in the stage top 10 percent of the individuals and top 25 percent of the teams do you register individual by the 21st of March and team by the 28th of March. That's when registration begins. Official age group quarterfinals will be set out Monday, April 11th. Please note that if you qualified for both, you will have to pay twice. I mean, it makes sense, but still pay twice. It's their big thing, right? Keep paying for stuff. Important dates that are individual qualifiers sent out by the 21st. Floor plans are sent out by the 21st. Oh, equipment list found here. Cool. There it is. All event details will be released for the individuals March 24th. All athletes must submit their first two results by Friday, March 25th. That is something that has been brought to my attention. So when we hear that, this is something that they implemented for the semifinals last year. They had the code. So in your video, you had to say whatever it was, if it was like Rogue or Saturn, there was just one word that you had to say in the video and they told you the word. And that's how they made sure that you were doing the workouts in the right amount of time. Just like you had to have it done by Friday at noon, then by Saturday at noon, then by Sunday at noon. 
and that was just a cool way for the semifinals to operate. Now that was the semifinals. The top 10% of the Open for the Individuals has a lot of people who are in all walks of life, and when you're in these walks of life, you're going to have life in the way. A lot of these people have jobs that they have to work on Friday. So I should let you know that since I made the initial video, I have been informed that quarterfinals last year were set up in a similar way to the way that they will be this year. So I am still of the opinion that there should not be hard deadlines on the Friday, the Saturday, and the Sunday. Per the information that I'm about to address here, I do think that if you can get all the work down in the amount of time, that it is still a feasible test. And it's something that will be more inclusive, which CrossFit is all about, towards the people who can make that 10%. Because when you make the top 10%, you're not a games athlete, it's not your life, you can't dedicate yourself to the fact that you might want to hit that time spot on a freaking noon on a Friday. Not yet, at least. If you're the top 2%, maybe you say that that's something where you should start implementing it. I understand that it's cool, it's different, and it is making it a better competition. I'm going to address the rest of that now. So the people who have reached out to me go, can you please talk about the fact that CrossFit's saying that we have to have these workouts done by Friday at noon and I'm a shift worker. Let's say this person's a nurse or a fireman or a police officer and they have to work from like Thursday at noon through Friday at noon. Work their 24 hour shift and then they get 48 hours off. What are they gonna do? Let's say they're a fireman and they're trying to get the workouts done. They're in the middle of a workout and they're on a call and then they have to leave their workout right in the middle and they gotta come up for it again. This is just something that isn't feasible for somebody who is releasing this workout and let's say this person can't get time off. They're very important to them. They wanna do quarterfinals. Maybe they're in contention for semifinals, maybe but they don't have six days. So six days is a reasonable amount of time to ask for some time off. I guess it depends on your job, but a lot of jobs need a little bit more time. They need two weeks to a month in order to request time off for something like this. And even if it's not like something where you are really trying to make a push for semifinals, but it is something that's important to you. You do this for your entire life. I mean, you're gonna pay your 50 bucks to sign up for the quarterfinal, and then you don't know whether or not you're going to be able to get all your scores in, do your freaking job, do your life, because they were releasing five workouts. You had three days to do five workouts. And if you wanted to do that GHD, sit up workout freaking three times in a weekend like be your own freaking guest go ahead and do it that's going to destroy you if you think you're going to get better by a couple reps and that's what's going to get you in and you have the ability and the capacity to handle all that volume go for it you did a four rep max front squat if you wanted to do it on thursday friday saturday and sunday and that was what was going to get you in cool but i don't think anyone's doing much better every single time so why do they have to say you have to have it done by friday at noon by saturday at noon and by sunday at noon i get that it's making it a more valid competition but do that in the semifinals. And again, not too big of an issue for the rich fronings of the world. It's not too big of an issue for even really me at this point in time. But I am actually kind of worried about the fact that I will need to get some judges lined up. I know last year you needed two judges. I need two judges that can have time off before Friday at noon to work with my team and I. That's not gonna be an easy task either. Getting all of these people, you need six people in the gym. You need two freaking CrossFit certified judges. And how easy is that to do? It's not easy to do, it's freaking hard. So CrossFit went from being all-inclusive and making the workouts as easy as possible to making a lot of things very challenging on a lot of people. And they did it just like that, just because they can do it. I am reading here now that they only need one judge. All athletes must use a registered judge, an individual who has completed the judges course. So that is something that is, I guess, better, like it's just one judge. I don't know if they'll change that. I know last year you needed two for a couple workouts when you're doing stuff like synchro GHD setups. You had to have both being watched. Upload all of your videos and that sort of thing. So that kind of is end discussion on all of that. But the big takeaways are that they aren't giving you very much time to follow the new format of make sure you're done by noon on each day, and that's a big issue. Now I can kind of open up the equipment list, individual quarterfinal equipment list. It is rather simple. Like, I don't even know why they didn't just put this in the freaking, why did they send this as a PDF? You need some dumbbells, a barbell, some bumper plates, a squat rack, wall space, glute ham developer, rope, floor space, rings, flat bench, medicine ball, plyo box, and rower. Similarities are you still needed a squat rack, you still needed the bumper plates, a barbell, you still needed the two dumbbells, you needed floor space, and I don't believe it was 30 feet of floor space last year. A plyo box with those sim similar dimensions as the freaking first workout, so it's short and you can short the range of motion if you want, I suppose. And one rower. That's all for the individuals. That was the individual checklist. What I do wanna look at now is comparing the individual checklist to the team checklist for equipment that you need. All the stuff that I just mentioned was individual. When you look at the team stuff, they don't need things like a C2 rower. They don't need things like a GHD. They don't need things like a flat bench. Looking at my phone. They don't need things like a squat rack. All they need is what you needed for the open, the 30 feet of space, 15 foot climbing rope, two dumbbells, 
of the 70, 50, and 35 pound variety. So the 70s are new, I suppose, and the gymnastics rings. I don't know what they're not including rowers for. I don't know what they're not including GHDs for. I don't know what they're not including benches for because those are things that we've known to come and expect. And I don't know why they would include them for the individuals, but not the teams. And I know a big issue last year and it wasn't very cool and everyone didn't like it was that the individual workout and the team workouts were very similar to one another. So it will be a good thing if they go ahead and program for the teams. Because it's not something they did, apparently. Either they program for the teams and create individual workouts, but usually what happens is they create the individual workouts and say, oh, go ahead, teams, just do something very similar. It doesn't really set up for a good test. Maybe it's very possible that the test does look good, but they only added a couple of things to what you already had from the open, which is what this equipment list says. When you take that into account, it's going to be, I'm just hoping for the best. Like I've said in the open videos, like the open kind of screwed everything up. It didn't really do things for the everyday CrossFitter trying to get their proper level. It did get the people through to the quarterfinals that had to get through to the quarterfinals. And now that you're at the quarterfinals, you're hoping for the best. You're hoping for the best program. You're hoping that people like me don't have anything more negative to say about this stuff. But when I look at this, it's already heading in a bad direction. And I hate that I'm having to think that. Let's talk about that bench press. 2018 was the first time that CrossFit had a bench press in it, right? The workout was Linda. 10 to 1 of the the deadlift, the bench press, and the squat clean. They had set weights. They did that off of an aggregate weight of the previous CrossFit Games year. So everyone used 195 as the standard male body weight. Females had the female standard body weight with a lighter bench press, I believe, just so they could it just kind of standardized for CrossFit. They had a little bit of a lighter bench press. Now, is the workout going to be Linda? I don't know, but I could really see something like Linda coming. Somebody out there posted that the other total would be a possibility, which is a one rep max overhead squat because they have a squat rack, and then it was a one rep max bench press, and then it was a one rep max clean. I think that would be a very cool workout. That was something that I was hoping for in the CrossFit Games in 2020. Outside of the fact that anything can happen, and it's really hard to guess, like it could be dumbbell bench presses, it could be that like weird monkey thing where you kind of crawl all around the freaking bench, and how many times can you do that? Everything is fair game with the bench press. You have to ask yourself, why are people not all up in arms about the fact that you need a bench? Because if you rewind, not too long ago, there was a point in time where Dave Castro posted to his Instagram, and he said, hey, you guys need dumbbells. He gave everybody a month of a heads up. It was even longer. I believe it was like a month and a half. He goes, hey, just so you guys know, six weeks out, you need two dumbbells. You need them for the open. You need 50s for the guys and 35s for the girls. And you need these things so that you can do the open workouts. We're trying to do a little bit more of it this year. And from that point forward, every gym, I have them here. I've got two sets of 50s and two sets of 35s because it's just kind of the standard weight that you'll move around as a CrossFit gym. The same way where you have your $1,000 rower, the same way where you have your freaking assault bikes and your pull-up rig and your freaking barbells. Now, dumbbells aren't super expensive. After the pandemic, they became a little bit more expensive, but back in the day, you could get them for about a dollar a pound. And as an affiliate, it wasn't the end of the world getting dumbbells. Like maybe they became scarce because everyone was buying them all at one time, but there was an uprage. Everyone's like, oh my God, I got to buy dumbbells. It's like, all right, but you're going to be able to use them all year and you're going to use them year after year. And when you opened up your affiliate where you're all upset that you had to buy five to 10 rowers, I don't think you were all upset that you had to buy five to 10 rowers. It's just kind of the name of the game. Now that also applies with the bench press. It's not something that is the name of the game in CrossFit, right? At least to this point, you saw that one time in the history of CrossFit, they programmed a bench press workout. That was Linda at the regional, which I just spoke about. But what I think is messed up is how everyone is all super happy about the bench press, but no one's talking about the fact that you have one freaking week to get the bench press. You got one week to get a bench press. Let's say you go rogue.com. You're going to scroll through the rogue re website, right? And you're going to be able to get a, pick up a bench from anywhere from $200 all the way up to $700. Now, if you spend more money on a good bench press, they can add like, if you don't know anything about benching, like the width of the bench, the cushion of the bench is going to have a very large impact on your ability to do a bench press. So whether you're using dumbbells or a flat bench, you're going for a one rep max or doing repetitions, firmness of the pad and the width of it is going to very much determine how much and how well you are able to perform the bench press. So let's say you're strapped for money at this point in time. You can pick up the $200 one. Rogue has a two, good $200 bench press. It's the one that I've got. But let's say you're at a gym and you just need to like scrap by and you go pick one up and the bench press is really narrow and the pad is all cushy. 
and your shoulders kind of roll off of the back of it and there's no width to it and all of a sudden you're at a huge disadvantage because CrossFit gives you one week of a heads up and no one's talking about that. I'm coming for you. Like what is wrong with you people? Why is it okay to hate on somebody like Dave Castro for giving you six weeks of a heads up and it's not okay for you to talk crap about CrossFit giving you a one week heads up? It's like, well, it's not the entire world, Andrew, it's just the quarterfinal. I go, yeah, it's 10% of the freaking population, which you know how many people have qualified at this point for this freaking competition? What, like, there, there's, there's a member at every gym, and let's say there's 15,000 affiliates across the world. You're not telling me that maybe nine to 12,000 of these affiliates might have one person who's going to say, hey, do we have a bench? And then the affiliate owner has to go out and get a bench. And I think everybody should have a bench. I think that everybody should be practicing pressing in the horizontal plane all the time so that you do things like full reps on your burpees, so that you have a well-developed chest and you're not all asymmetrical because all you do is vertical pressing and vertical pulling with the pressing and the pull-ups. So you do a horizontal pull and you do a horizontal press. Benching is very important in my opinion. Everyone should have one, but that's the size of the point. The actual point is that CrossFit has never said that you need to do a bench press. They tell you about the push-up and the level one seminar. There is no bench press. This is something that I had preached. I'm the man behind the mask. As a freaking programmer for years. I was at my gym and every other Friday for all of eternity, we would do a bench press workout. People loved it. Some people hated it. Some people were like, you know what? We need to do a bush press. They were generally the people who just didn't like bench pressing because they were getting beat by somebody who had been doing it every single day. I thought that it was important. Here it is being important, having the benches. That affiliate that I used to own is well outfitted for this workout. They have 10 bench presses to use. Good bench presses. So the workout can be whatever it wants. You can do as much training as you want at this point. You're not going to get much better at the bench press. If you do CrossFit because there was never a bench and now you got to do a one rep max and you're hoping that it's not a one rep max, like shut the fuck up and enjoy the fact that you had all these years of handstand pushups instead of bench press reps. I'm cautiously optimistic about what's going on here. I said so because the team workouts are going to be obviously different based upon the equipment list. That's a good thing. There's no way to guess really what the individual workouts are because there are so many different patterns in which they can follow. They can do whatever the hell they want. I've seen some programs where people are doing all of these GHD sit-ups. I think they caught too much flack for that last year, so I wouldn't plan on them doing 180 GHD sit-ups. I wouldn't heed my word on that because they might just do it again. But like with the Open, there's no pattern. There was no repeat last work workout last year. We don't know if it's going to build off last year, look completely different. We don't know if they're going to do something heavy. They might not do anything heavy ever again because CrossFit, you don't know what's going on. And this is just my quick take after looking at the website, the equipment list, and I wanted to get some stuff out there for you guys to talk about. So like always, subscribe to the freaking channel. Like the video, comment, have a discussion with somebody else in the comments section. And until I get something else to talk about, I'll see you later. Andrew Hiller, bye.